live. We're live from, from, well, it's not sunny. No, it's definitely not sunny here in Ventnor, New Jersey. Pops. Dark and rainy. Tonight, did I did I tell you what the title of tonight's live stream is? Um, something about it's the worst time ever to buy cars. Because last week was pretty bad. Yeah. And it got worse. I told you. Let's let's jump you right asked into me, it. You asked me last week, and you said, is this the worst time ever to buy cars? Yeah. I said, probably until, well, tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that what I said? Yeah, and yeah. then you were right, because look at the Well, news. actually, I was wrong, because there were any number of people who commented on our, on our uh, YouTube channel that, you know, perhaps during uh, World War Two was was the it could have been you know, the worst. But I was trying to do it within the time frame that I've been alive. Let's look at the news, Dad. Okay. This is incredible. So you know what I didn't see this week? Okay, each time I share the screen, and then you want to talk, that's fine. But I just got to then go back to this view. But uh, the only thing that I forgot to look at, I meant to pull it up, was the Black Book data for this week. We can but, run. We can look at Black Book. Okay, well. cool. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'll let you do your thing. No, it's okay, pops. You know, I've got some new ad libs tonight as well. Uh, oh, well. I can't wait. Well. Let's let's give some data first. Okay. Let's give a little bit of data first. Yeah. Then we'll get into the fun. Yeah. The latest cuts as a result of the chip shortage yeah you see it in the thumb- thumbnail for tonight's video toyota gm ford and vw all said production would be crimped in coming weeks due to the shortfall in semiconductors the big one was toyota well yeah only because they said that for the month of september their production is going to be reduced by 40 percent of what they had anticipated and if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen back on the ya community which yeah. is bumping thanks yeah. to everyone that's a part of the community yes back on the ya community we had posted what was it i think it was august inventory should come up uh inventory yeah august inventory levels yes i post this monthly also yes. you can just run market price reports back on the website for free yeah. and you can see the inventory or the market day supply for a particular vehicle but if i zoom way in here where are you where are you where are you where's toyota uh, that there would be down under the t's yeah right there yeah thank you pops you're welcome um, Toyota right there. So yeah. Toyota's already at a 17 day supply of inventory. Yes. And when you look back at Toyota two years ago, three years ago, remember we did that. What were yeah. they usually at? It was like 45 or 50, something like that. So if they're cutting production by 40% and they're already at more than half capacity of what they typically be supply wise, that's, I mean, what is, what does that signal to you in terms of severity well, of what's well, going on? When, when they say 40%, that's 40% of worldwide production. Yeah. That, that only equates to, well, 80,000 units lost for the United States. Nothing. Well, let's go back. Let's see how many units do they currently have in the market right now? 139,000. Wow. Yeah. And you're saying 80, 000. I mean, so do you think that, do you think Toyota is going to beat Subaru? Um, no. But I think they'll get close. <laughs> Could we see single digit day supply for Toyota? Yeah, probably. Like that's yeah. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I, I mean it's gonna do one of two things. Huh. Either it'll spur more people to get into the market and really overpay, or it'll move the dealers to make the additional dealer markup even more than what they have been. Which is scary. Yes, because so I saw somebody today posted, well, they were asking $8,000 over. Well, that 8000 could become ten or twelve or fifteen. Pop your headphones on. And and uh, I got to pop my headphones Well, I have a new ad lib that's, that's totally appropriate. So, 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 so say what you're saying again. Sorry. What was I saying? The dealer I added. The dealer added the markups are ridiculous. There's not a big enough bowl to make that much poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, there isn't. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun night yeah um, yes, it is. we've got some uh some community members in the house let's do a quick little roll call holly's in the house from san antonio melissa's here have Thank you ever you been to san antonio here. i have not I well have you not. should you Marcus should go there sometime i've been there it was colorado let me finish. it was beautiful the the uh, what is it the the waterway the canal whatever the hell it is it runs it was it was just beautiful i remember it i'm glad okay and Holly's here from there. Yeah. Hi, Holly. <laughs> and Flaxus is in the house. Uh, BB's suggesting that you do something there. We've got yeah a Facebook live stream viewer as well. Mark, at what point is it price gouging? What do you think, Pops? Because we're in this current it, you it, know, supply it, demand. It, it becomes price gouging when, when everybody says, I'm not paying that much anymore. Yeah. But until people in mass say, I'm not paying that much anymore, it's not price gouging. It's just capitalism at work. We've got At its finest. Twisty Slayer. Love that name. Yeah. EVs are the future. 
Well, not when the Bolt is the EV of choice. Did you see the uh, the news from GM? Uh, what, that they've stopped? They have a stop sale on, on Let's pull all that Bolt up real quick. EVs. And, and, and there was a comment that I saw, and somebody said, well, well, how's that going to impact my ability to be able to negotiate and buy one? I don't know. The fact that there's a <laughs> stop sale means they can't sell it to you. GM will spend about a billion on an expanded recall on top of the nearly one billion they already spent last quarter. Wow. And these bolts, if you remember, these are the ones where you can get a quote unquote deal because the, yeah. the incentives are ridiculous. The, these, but. these are like the Ford Pinto of the 70s, where every bolt comes with a free asbestos <laughs> driving suit. <laughs> they have to. Yeah. We're getting a ton of love for San Antonio in the chat tonight. I really I'm I, telling you, it was one of the it was one of the most beautiful cities I've been to in America. I, I, I mean, it's the home of the Alamo. Um, the River Walk is just a wonderful place. Uh, good restaurants. Just it was really. I mean, I you River know. Walk. There you go, pops. Tim's yeah. helping you out. So Thank we, you. we've got real estate law in the house saying new car is smarter purchase than used right now. We've been saying it for a while now. If you are in the market for a used car, consider actually leasing a new car. Yes, it might make a lot more but, sense. But you're going to have to work on getting the dealer not to not to add all that additional dealer markup. There was somebody on our uh, community forum today. Uh, asking about a, uh, a Honda that he was looking at. Yeah. Um, and and Space noticed the same thing I did, which was, well, the selling price was just $3,000 more than the MSRP. You, well, you need to get an explanation of that. Yeah. And then you need to see how much of that you can negotiate away. Yeah, no, totally. Absolutely. Let's continue to go through some of the production lost um, back on, on uh, as a result of the chip shortage. And this yes. is like the reason why right now is really not the time to be in the market. GM's idling their EV plant that's producing the Bolt. Um, then Ford well, is there, down there, for a week. There's, there's a good reason yeah, to, they to can't idle sell the EV they can't plant sell. that's producing the Bolt. If you can't sell them and you don't really know what the problem is that's causing these fires, maybe you don't want to keep building. Ford's down for a week. Okay. Down the, goes Ford. Down goes Frasier. That's going to be a new ad, though. <laughs> um, VW yeah. is closing one of their largest plants in as well. Audi is extending their summer break for two factories in Germany. Oh, wow. And we, we show it week over week. The The auto forecast solutions yes. were up to now, it was 7.1 million yes. uh, vehicles lost to production. This will update again on Monday. And we'll, we'll, yes. we'll that, and that number will go up. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to say 7.3. Okay, case. I like that. That's probably going to yeah. be somewhere around yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, it's just because really, right now, it's just short of seven two, that's seven point one six. That doesn't capture the Toyota news or anything like well, that. Well, actually, they say it does, but yeah, well, we'll we'll yeah, see we'll what see. We, we see what they we, they really say come Monday. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So yeah. I've got one other ad lib I want to play for you because these are always surprises for you. Um, and then we we put on the um, on the YAA community the uh, post for tonight's stream. So we have some questions that have shown up there. Anyone. Okay. Anyone and everyone's more than welcome. These are in the all member channel. You can post your comments here. So we'll go through and answer answer these. And then, oh, someone got their t shirt. Well, look at that. Let's see there. Yeah, That's yeah. nice. Jeremy yeah. got as if it's taxable, it's negotiable t shirt. Yeah, that deserves a Ray Shevska um, um, uh, stamp of approval. Oh. And and does it get the did you give it the Well, it's or? it's hard for me to produce at the well, same time. Okay, but yeah, I need yeah. to hear okay, it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Here, you, I, here. Yeah. Here we go, folks. This I don't have any family in Central Florida. I'm not looking for any family in Central Florida. I don't. I pressed the wrong button. Yes, but that's Rick like Shevska stamp of approval. Yeah. Timing on that was pretty good. Yeah, it really was. We got but one. I don't have any family in Central Florida, and I don't know why I should have to pay two grand <laughs> for my friends and family uh, upcharge. We've got one other. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a fantastic yes. video. I really enjoyed this snippet. I know that people my age, people half my age, people my son's age, they just can't afford to buy a car today because the price of cars is too damn high. And if you live out in a rural area, how the hell are you getting around? You can't afford that truck. You can't afford that tractor because the price of transportation is just too damn high. Nicely yeah, said. Buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a wise man once said. 
They're like, how the heck did you go to? Hey, we've got someone in the house from Margate. That's one wow. town over. Yeah. Hi there. Yeah. Um, see you on the boardwalk tomorrow. Yeah. Um, well, well, she don't have a boardwalk. She's yeah, got to come to our boardwalk. But, but uh, I mean, that video that we did where the price of cars is too yeah. damn high, the fact that you just went on that tangent of how do you get around in rural areas, I thought <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. I didn't talk about I didn't touch on horses or anything. No, no, but no. But I no. could have. All right, let's start answering some questions, then we're going to come back to the live chat. Okay, so let's yes. let's start. Let's, okay, let's get moving here. All right, I'm I'm here. I'm, I I'm know, here. I, I know. you know this is my this is my life. This is my Saturday night. Same here, Pops. Yeah, Nick. Oh no, I'm starting to think I should have just gone ahead and bought the car I was looking at two weeks ago. Possibly, you know, deals may, aren't necessarily moving too terribly much, but the news is not positive. Well, the, no, the news is not positive, and there's nothing in the news that would that would indicate anytime soon that the price of cars is going to be coming down. Uh, what it really indicates is that the price of cars might continue to go up. So if you want to mitigate the continuing escalation in the prices, it might be better to buy today than, well, tomorrow. But know that if you were to buy today, hoping to save money from buying tomorrow, that you're still going to drastically overpay. Yes, 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 yes. That is unfortunately true. Yes. GJ Scott, I'm seeing data via YA market report suggesting some new Volkswagen ID4s in my area are sitting on lots above 30 days. Given this, I'm curious whether it's also the worst time in history to lease a car. I'm not sure if I see the correlation between ID4s, which are pretty, like, they're brand new. Yes. And they're also, like... Electric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, versus, like, if that's a sign that leasing isn't necessarily a hot top, a hot thing right now. Well, I, you know, my rationale for why I think people should lease is because it mitigates the excess amount that you're paying for the car, um, and it's over and done with in three years, where if you buy a car like... Most folks in America buy a car where they finance it for five, six, seven years. Yep. Um, you know, three years from now, you're going to be severely upside down because there could be market uh, adjustments back to what we would consider to be historically normal levels for what depreciation should be on a car. And that would mean that a lease would make more sense because it's over and done with in three years, as opposed to buying it and finding out three years into your six-year loan that you are even more upside down than you would have ever imagined. Yeah, that's our big concern is people being terribly upside yes. down. But if you if you purchase or lease, make sure there's gap insurance. Absolutely. We've got a, a great question here from F. Bueller, so we will address this later on in the stream. Would that be first? Potentially. Make some models that have the most reasonable pricing right about now. We've seen some success stories recently with Volvos. Which yes. also had, they've had um, pretty good day supply of inventory as well, and 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 other vehicles that that you would uh, tend to be able to get slightly better deals on sedans. Yeah, absolutely. Big sedans, small sedans, sedans, uh, because this country everybody seems to be enamored with well pickup trucks and, and SUVs. SUVs. And we will. Um, uh, Someone saying the screen dropped focus in the chat. Has the screen dropped focus? What does that mean? All caps screen dropped focus. Let me know. Let me know if, if, if there's I, an issue. It looks pretty good on our end. Yeah. You see what yeah. I see? I see like a handsome guy with hair, and then I see a short, fat, balding guy with not as much hair. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go back to the questions. Um, well done. Yes. So we've got from Aaron Nielsen. I've gotten two dealers to basically quote me MSRP. I'm guessing there is no discount below this right now, given the supply shortage thoughts. And that's why we go to OTD, right? Yes. Honestly, honestly, this could be a good thing in the long run. This idea of, okay, hear me out here. What could be good about this is we move to a place where it's just like the price is the price, which I think everyone ultimately wants us to be. You know, like the price is the price and it is what it is. Don't tack on then a bunch of accessories yes. and BS fees. Yes. So I think for Aaron, what's going through my head is sure, they're both at MSRP, but what's the OTD? And let's see what that is. And if yes. it's an, if it's the MSRP we, plus $5,000 in crapola, then. Excuse me, then it's not a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. and even if both say, guess what? Uh, you know, we're not adding any crapola, but one might have. If it's Florida, one might have a nine ninety nine dock fee, while the other might only have a seven ninety nine dock fee. Yeah, and, and I think what we'll do is at some point on tonight's stream, we'll go to the success stories channel back on the YA community. I mean, it, the people are getting deals. People are still getting deals, and and deals in this market. You know, yeah, like, you have to work at it. 
There was a great and, and one. It depends, it was... and, it, and and I think oftentimes it depends on the on your region. I'm just gonna pull one yeah. up. Okay. Yeah, James. Yeah, James today. He bought his first ever uh, uh, car after leasing. Yeah, and he actually bought Knowledge's power. Yeah, and he bought a Volvo. Yeah. A great oh, looking yeah. XC90. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. Looking. And one of the things he got the stamp of. I really got to teach you how to do this. But one of the things is yeah. the F and I manager. Yeah. Uh, when I went to sign the paperwork, uh, uh, it was super smooth and enjoyable. There was something where they asked him if he was in the business. Well, he just hangs out with a couple guys. Well, one guy that was in the business and one guy who wasn't. There it is, right yeah. there. Yeah. And the finance manager asked me if I was in the business. Like, yeah, yeah if you start to, like, you know. All right, anyway, back yeah. to the questions. Um, Sandra, yes. a.k.a. Sandy Hicks. Yes. Hi, Ray and Zach. My question for tonight is, what is the difference between a subscription car agreement and a rental car agreement? My example is Care by Volvo, which allows someone to exit the agreement after five months. Do other rental car or subscription car companies have similar offerings? Um, well, a rental car is just that, a rental car. And, and those typically have a daily fee. Yeah. Um, and they don't necessarily carry everything on it that, for instance, the Volvo Care carries, which is um, it includes the automobile insurance on the car. It includes excess wear and tear coverage on the vehicle. It includes gap insurance. Yep. It includes a tire and wheel protection. And it includes maintenance. Yep. Okay. Now, on a normal rental car, um, those fees aren't included. No. The maintenance might be, but that'd be about it because it's the rental car. Their company. Yeah, yeah they're responsible. Okay. Um, and not all subscription services allow you to just get out after four payments or five months. Yeah. I mean, um, and, and different OEMs have subscriptions. Yes. Different it's, third parties have subscriptions. Yes. There's all sorts of different agreements out yes. there. Yes. Yes. So, it, I mean, it depends. You know, I, I looked a little more thoroughly and deeply into the Volvo Cares. And in my mind, because of everything that it did cover, I thought it represented a very fair value yeah. for a consumer today, since everything is basically rolled into that payment. And you have the ability to get out after after four months yep absolutely yeah. we had this question dad come in from bill yeah. wilson is yeah. it still a horrible time to buy a used car if you want to buy an older model with significant miles outright from a private seller? very specific question yeah. what i do want to do however yes is i want to actually show and let's look at together the, the most recent things together yeah buddy yeah buddy <laughs> <laughs> um, the most recent report, Market Insights from Black Book. So this is the sixth week in a row, seventh week in a row. Seventh week in a row I of think wholesale. This, I think this qualifies as a trend. Now. Yes, yes. yes. With, with uh, wholesale um, used car prices declining. Yes. So we saw significant declines again. Yeah, yeah, a little more than half a point. Which for seven weeks in a row, we're up yeah. to you know, three, three and a half points. points. Yeah. Now, yeah. let's look at retail prices. Let's jump right there and then we'll come back up. Okay. Bear with me. I'm not trying to make everyone sick, but give me a second. There it is. Retail the, prices. So purple line is yeah. 2021. So all of the lines start right there, right? They start at one on this index. Yes. The orange line was last year and the blue line was the year before that. And then they track retail prices yes. every single week, how they've changed. So yes. for example, last year during the COVID pandemic, at the beginning of that, the 22nd week into the year, yes. we saw retail used car prices decline. Considerably. Considerably. Yeah. Typically, they stay on this type of trajectory because yeah. there's seasonality. Yes. This is this year. Uh, what happened to the seasonality? Well, not only is there no <laughs> seasonality, yeah. but we see this inverse relationship yes. between wholesale yes. uh, prices. Yeah, which have gone down about three and a half points in the last seven weeks. Over seven weeks. Yes. Versus retail yeah, prices, prices, which have, have edged up slightly, which would indicate to me that they're still not enough used cars out there uh there's not there's not nearly enough used cars out there to satisfy the demand which is what's allowing them to keep the retail asking prices at, at an even higher level than they've been um while they're paying uh, a little bit less for these cars that they're now trying to sell so back to bill's question yeah of is now still a bad time to buy an older used car you know, if, if one would assume 
typically that if you're buying private party, you're paying less than what you would pay from a dealership. Yeah, because there's less uh, less hands involved. Well, there, there's less hands involved. There's no and, reconditioning. And there's no yeah. reconditioning and and everything when you buy from a from a private party, it's all as is, a hundred percent completely. You have no recourse. Where um, if you buy from a dealership, even an as is car has to have a certain level of uh, of uh, merchantability. Yeah. Um, so the, you can't just part of having your dealer's license is making sure you're selling cars that are safe to drive on the street. Yes. Yeah. You know where where they've at least had to pass a state inspection, safety inspection, and buying from a private individual. Uh, it doesn't. It just has to pass your inspection. We've got a great question here, Pops, okay. um, from Donner Pass Whiskey. Yes. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Will this take years to, to level back off? And I want to share from a conversation I had this past week. Yes. I'm not going to name any names or anything like that. But this is these are people that work in the industry. They expect. They, this is what they're hearing from the manufacturers. Um I'm, I'm like a 12-year-old in my head. Why is that funny to me? Um, it is. <laughs> you know, I, I'm thinking about doing that. <laughs> um, one of the OEMs, one of the yeah. big OEMs, they, yes. they, they've told their dealer body. Yes. August. This is the worst month of it. We'll be back on our feet. Everything will be back, hunky-dory by Q1 of next year. And the person I was talking to said, that's BS. Yeah. It's likely going to be, I think the worst is going to be November or December of this year. Yes. And it's going to be Q2 or Q3 of next year before things start to look better. That's, that sounds like 12 months from now. <laughs> <laughs> which which uh, six months ago, when people would say, well, when do you think? My response was probably 12 to 18 months. Yep. Um, and so if it's still 12 months from now, I guess the 18 months... But, you know, the, uh, we still don't know exactly what the future holds, but I, I would suspect, based on, on the amount of lost production this year, yep. you, you, you know, as much as they'd like to be able to ramp all that back up like that, they can't if they can't get the chips. Um, <laughs> yeah, so just... I, I, I think it's going to be a while yeah. before we see an influx of inventory to get things back to what we used to consider normal. Now there are plenty of people out there who would sell, who would tell you, we're never getting back to that. The yeah. manufacturers don't want it to get back that way. For GM, the, yeah. yeah, the dealers don't want it to necessarily get back that way because um, the dealers are making more money than they've ever made. Ever. Um, I know that talking to friends of mine, um, their stores they have made more money in the first seven months of this year um, than they've ever made from their dealerships, ever. Ever. Um, the and, same people I'm talking to are saying that dealerships yeah. that, that three years ago were not versus, profitable versus now are making five times as much you, than they you, were then. You know, um, when I was with the Mini brand, one of the major drivers for Mini was to figure out how to get their, their dealer body profitable because i mean at that time there was 110 or 120 mini dealerships in the country and less than half wow were actually profitable wow so the, the you know and and most dealers could absorb that loss because well they were affiliated with their bmw stores which is like that's like the germans gave you a printing press yeah okay yeah. to make american money yeah, and and so you could you could afford to absorb the loss of your mini store. Today, even the mini stores are making money. They don't have any inventory, but they're making money. Yeah, um, and I think this will. I actually my my new hunch yes. is that this will have a lasting effect on. Um, oh, wow, Mark. I'm sorry to think that Ray should follow Malaysian COVID rates to know when chips will improve. Yeah, Pops, what are you doing on the weekend? Why aren't you tracking the Malaysian COVID outbreaks? Um, well, you know, actually, I, I have been. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this man never stops working. Never, never. You know, yeah, buddy. I, I've been on the Malaysian deep wind. <laughs> okay. Just, stop. <laughs> stop. We are live. I don't know where that's going to go. We're yeah. just going to stop but that. Just, just trying to track COVID numbers, and the best place to get that information is the Malaysian Deep Web, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Okay, this yeah. this this earned you. Down goes, <laughs> down goes, 
Francesca. Yeah, yes, she does. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I think there are going to be lasting impacts from this. I think we'll, we'll, we've already seen it from GM and from Ford saying we want to give dealers less inventory. And then what's going to happen, I think, is the back end is going to be less of a, 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 a I, I want to say the S word. Less, less convoluted because there's going to be enough front end margin to justify not trying to just like. No, because they've already seen figured that out they, they can make money. That they that can make money point. on the back end, and, and and I don't want to say anything bad about dealers, but if they figure out how they can make money, they're not giving it up. Yeah, you're right. Okay, but the the one thing that that I I would find troubling if I was a dealer, and you know, many 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 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, yeah, especially in the in your more heavily populated areas, you know, dealerships didn't sit on a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't have a lot of necessarily have a lot of inventory in stock um, unless they went and they rented some parking lots elsewhere so that they could have offsite storage for cars. Since then, dealerships have grown bigger and bigger and bigger, sit on much larger footprints of ground. All those dealers that bought up that real estate to build those mausoleums that sit on 10 or 12 acres of ground that have typically been surrounded by 1,000 or 1,200 or 1,500 cars, yeah. um, they, they still have all that ground, and they don't want to see half of that ground or two-thirds of that ground just sitting there with nothing on it. Because when that happens, that aspect, that part of that real estate isn't making them any money. DJ Shamar says, can you guys just answer questions in the chat? We're getting there. We're getting there. We're trying. We're trying. Yeah. We're trying to keep our eyes on the big picture. Yeah. It's a timely yeah, I comment. That. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Let's answer questions back on the community channel, and then we will yeah. come back yeah, to I the was... live chat. Question for tonight. Difference between... Okay. Can we to yeah. Teresa. Can you comment on the Chevy Tahoe? Now I'm trying to put an order now. The dilemma I see uh, is see what is coming to into the lots that are settled and get exactly what I want. The other dilemma is used Tahoe is worth more now with fewer miles rather than waiting two years for this Yo Pass. Um, for this two pass. Probably. Oh, for this two. Oh, good good yeah. call. Yeah. If dealers are moving away from big discounts on fact in factory orders, is it just a big scare tactic to make us buy at these outrageous prices? It's a good question. Most dealers here in Texas are two to five thousand dollars above MSRP, but there are few at MSRP minus your trade when the vehicle comes in and military five hundred dollars off. Looking at getting a diesel. I mean, that sounds really good. If you can get one at MSRP mm -hmm. plus the military. And if you can get them to, to pay more for your trade than they normally would have, that suddenly becomes a wash. Yeah, trade in. And we have, if you don't know by now, the trade in tactics for success. We've got those? We got those. I'll toss this in the, my dad breaks it down. They're two separate transactions. So let me toss that in the. Oh my God. There we go. We give this away for free? For free. Oh my God. Thank well, you, Mark Pointer. Now we get. Donated. Thank yes. You, Thank you, kind. Mark. Thank you very, very much. And is what's that called? A super sticker? A stup a st a super, a, not a super sticker. Could a super be. sticker. Wow. Thank you for that, Mark. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. All right. Let's keep you know running through else? here. Thanks, Mark, for that. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube gets half of that. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> All right. This is from Bob Russo. Because, you know, from what I understand, Google doesn't have enough money. Correct. Two yeah. questions for tonight, please. Does the advantage of trading in used cars for their higher prices now become neutralized by the higher cost of buying the car now? Uh, well, well, what it does is it it's neutralizes. Yes. It's the other way around. It neutralizes the higher price that you're paying for the new yeah, car. Yeah, that's what he means. Yeah. yeah, yeah the answer is yes. Yes. Second question would be, how can the dealer offer free factory scheduled maintenance for life if repairs are the major source of income? It also states 5000 Yeah, your interpretation of this, please. Well, um, uh, maintenance is different than repairs. There you go. Okay. Patrick Holmes, longtime listener, first time caller. Hey. I would like to purchase a Ford truck in the next zero to six months. I like that. I like that. that yeah. <laughs> I know from your videos. Would, would, would tonight be too soon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know from your videos, now is the worst time to try and do that until yeah. next week. My question yeah. is how likely you think it will be that the situation changes in a meaningful way in the next six months? If we're talking about saving a few thousand bucks. I'm not sure it's worth the wait. I don't have a car currently, and we're. If we're talking ten to fifteen thousand, then yes, it is. I live in San Francisco. Yeah. So, pops, what do you anticipate over the next six months? Let's use let's use two timelines here between now and the end of the year. Yes. And six months. Do you anticipate significant changes? No. Great. Let me bump it out. Twelve okay. months. 
Maybe. We're, we're talking summer of next year. Maybe. Maybe. 18 months. We're talking. Should be. And two years from now? Things might be back to normal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that, Iman. And there yeah. you go, actually. DJ DJ Shamar, who is lighting up the chats. So we're going to. Yeah. Do you think December is but a great. But he's an LLC. He's a limited liability corporation. Uh, DJ Shamar. Yeah. This is. Yeah. Well, now we're consulting, technically, yes. business yes. to business. Yes. We're B2B. Amon, thank you for that. Yes, really thank you. It. Thank you very, very much. Is December the right time to buy a car? Typically. It'll be different this Historically year. Historically speaking, it, it normally is. Yep. Will that continue this year? My suspicion is um, that there'll be some uh, better deals to be had, not many, yep. and not by a lot. Um, but only because they're trying to hit sales objectives for the year. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, let's keep going through here, and then we're going to jump to the live chat. We're maybe five minutes away. And this is from Anthony. And again, yes. if you want to have your questions posted back on the YA community, do that as yes. well in advance. Yes. We'll answer them. Hello, is it still possible to get positive equity in a leased car when trading it in early with the shortages, or would it be better to just wait until closer to the lease end date to see if the shortage improves? And get into another lease to get into another lease. Uh, well, uh, it depends how many months are left on your lease. But yes, if you can trade it in, um, you will have positive equity. As you've always told me, the lease is an agreement for a set amount of time. Someone's making the payments. So yes. if you've got six payments left, but your 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 payoff versus what the vehicle's worth, it's five thousand dollar delta. Oh, I like that. And you got six payments, but maybe yeah. the six payments are three thousand dollars. Sure, you're still up two grand. Here, here's the thing that you you have to realize: um, the way they they calculate, typically they calculate a payoff on a lease, is they take your remaining payments, less a tiny bit of interest that you wouldn't be paying on yep. those payments because they're getting paid early, plus your residual value. So they're they're going to you know the lease company is collecting their money either yeah. way. But even having said that, if if like you just said, if with with that extra three thousand dollars added in, and you can still have two thousand dollars worth of equity, then yeah, by all means, it makes sense. Let's keep moving and grooving here. I, I like the Kimberly and Klein guys. I have a thing tonight. Unfortunately, I will miss you. We miss you, Kimberly. You know who else has a thing tonight? And I meant to mention it up front, Igor. Igor has a family uh, 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 event this evening. He he emailed me the other day to, to say, hey, I'm sorry, I won't be able to be there Saturday. I, I hate the fact that I'm going to miss it, Yeah, uh, that I won't be able to participate with the community. Uh, but Igor Igor's hanging out with his family tonight. Uh, let's keep going here. Lemingus Menicus. Yeah. Ray, is there any truth to statistics? For example, I heard that women who carry a uh, where is this going? A little extra weight, weight live, live longer, longer than, than the partners, partners who point, point it out. out. Um, you know, statistically speaking, oh, um, and and the statistics that I got were from the California uh, Department of Corrections. Um, statistically <laughs> speaking, that's true. Okay, we're yes. going to continue to move yes. on. Yeah, um, he always has the best. Sally, <laughs> interesting thing happened to me today. What car yeah. shopping? What car shopping test road? I'm sorry, I can't. All right, next. I it, it, there was like the double. Con All right. Okay. Bob Russo, if yeah. this scenario goes on for a while, will we not be forced to buy higher price cars? We will then we will be accustomed to it with limited selections. Maybe we should buy earlier than later. I mean, this is what we it's anticipate a possibility. could happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know. Hesitant Sharon, good evening and new member. Welcome. My understanding is that prices will remain high for some time. I'm getting a great rate for my credit union right now for up to five years. I retire in four. I believe I'm picking a car I will drive well into retirement. I've always drove a car 10 plus years. Okay. Even though you say it's the worst time, I'm afraid it may get worse and we'll end up with another 10 plus car for now um, uh, and a car payment in retirement. What do you think? Well, if, if your plan is to keep it for 10 plus years um, and, and if, you, if you amortize the extra money you're paying, over a 10 year period of time, it it will amount to very little. Yep. So it might make sense for you to just go ahead, bite the bullet, move forward, get the car, and know that you're gonna live with that car for the next 10 or 12 years. And and that, that amount that you overpaid will be mitigated by the amount of time that you kept the car. Big V, just bought a 22 Honda Civic Sport for less than MSRP. Do you think I got a good deal? This is a perfect opportunity to queue yes. up Yes, the fact that, and, and likely you did, but yeah. back on the YA community, we yeah. have a Review My Deal channel, Yeah, which is every single deal has got comments on it. You want to know if you're getting a good car deal? 
posted in the review. Yes. I mean, look at this. This is yes. incredible. Yes. It just keeps going. You kind of like us. And then yeah. we have the dealer reviews channel. So if you're trying to find a dealership yes. and you don't know and who we to know work with. And we know for a fact that people would recommend that you don't go to the Kia store in Port, Rich, Port Charlotte. Yeah, we know yeah, that for yeah. sure. And then we also have invoices. The community, and please, if you want to be a part of this, post yeah. invoices if back here. If you can here. get them, yes. Yeah, if you have an invoice from a yeah. dealer, put it in here so yeah. that you can help other people out. Yes. Anyway, all right, back to, we were almost at the bottom of it. Uh, YouTube. Tonight's show. Let me scroll down. This is tonight's show. Yes. I know, I know. Yeah. Show more comments. We were at the bottom here. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ray and Zach, for this community. Regarding leasing being better right now, what are your thoughts on Cars Brands, Audi SRS models that usually do not lease well? They were expensive then. They're going to be even more expensive, expensive now. now. If, they, if, if they don't typically lease well, there's no reason to believe that they're going to lease better today. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, I mean, those are the type of cars that, that carry greater depreciation, which means that you have a higher payment, and, and it is what it is. When it comes, and 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 I can tell you from experience that, for instance, BMW and Mercedes Benz are really, really aggressive in their marketing for lease yeah. cars, payment wise. They want to be the market leaders, and Audi specifically says we're not remotely interested in being the market leader we don't we don't plan on being the cheapest we don't want to be the cheapest yep so their leases are never quite as competitive as a bmw or a mercedes lease is there you go so um you, you got if you know that is their history but no, it's not going to be a better time. Pops, we got DJ Shamar to get a tax write-off as a business expense, a $10 donation. God bless you, DJ. Um, yeah. Make sure you talk to your CPA about that at the yes, end of the year. Yes. Thank you. Trying yes. to buy a car this year and worried about overpaying some recent tips. So this is a great opportunity, DJ to, Shamar. Yeah. What do you think I'm going to queue up? I think you're going to queue up our community. And, and honestly, because my dad and I – know what's going on big picture, but we learn from the success stories. Yes. And I also saw there was a comment about RAV4s. Um, and so DJ Shamar, I would encourage you to come back here and look at and every, anyone and everyone yes. can read the success stories and look how many there are. Yes. And so you can actually read the tactics that other people are using and doing. And you can also search like RAV4 uh offer on a toyota rav4 okay. someone got into yeah. i mean rav4 i mean there's just so much you can learn how other people are doing on rav4s yes. just by typing in yes. rav4 and honestly i think we even have some rav4 invoices yeah so here's like a rav4 invoice for example this is from a community member hi melissa thank you yeah the emojis on there but anyway that would be our recommendation is take a peek there Let's answer the last question from tonight's uh, comments back on the community, okay. and then yeah. we're going to the live chat yeah. for rapid fire to see how many people we can help, okay? Okay, yeah, I'm in on that. Hoska, sales manager gave me the invoice price for a CX-5 and asked me what I thought would be a f would be fair to pay over that. What would you suggest? Um, I think we have a CX-5 invoice in here. We might. Um, you know, I, I used to, when I was a sales manager and I would do that with a customer, and I used to say, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to make you a partner in the business. Here's the invoice. As a partner, what would you like us to make? And and whatever the customer said, if the customer said $100 over invoice, or if they said $500 over invoice, or they said $1,000 over invoice, I looked at them and said, whatever number you give me, that's the number I'm going to sell you the car for. Yeah. Okay, because you're a partner. How do you want this partnership? How long do you want this partnership to last? Yeah. So knowing in today's world what the market conditions are, um, I, I would, you know, if if you offer them two, three, four, five hundred dollars over invoice and they agree to that, they're doing you a huge favor in today's world. Let's break down the actual uh, a CX-5 invoice really quick. Yeah. And and this is for everyone out there to, to better understand how to read these invoices. Let me make sure we can all see this pretty well. Okay. So here we have an invoice for a 2021 CX-5 uh, Grand Touring. Yes. Yeah. the trim. Yes. Invoice amount, retail amount. Okay. So you can see there's $1,230, $1,240 of, of markup from invoice amount to retail amount. and then you have this retractable cargo cover is a 200 dollar uh, dealer price um yeah. and a 250 dollar retail price the transportation fee that's your that's your destination fee yes. that's non-negotiable that's yeah. part of the msrp yeah so you've got your total spread here of like you said about 1200 dollars. yeah 
Now, what do you see that like someone that maybe isn't in the industry wouldn't necessarily know? You've got this NEO, but really what we're looking at is the E plan, yeah. the S plan, DH, co-op, SMAG, and SMAD. Yeah. What do some of these things mean? Well, employee plan. Yep. Um, employee pricing. Yep. Which uh, is which is pretty much your invoice price, right around invoice price, 30809 right? Well, well, it's a couple thousand below. Yeah, but your your initial invoice amount. Yes. Yeah. But, but yes, the, your yeah, your S yeah. plan, which is yeah. probably like your supplier pricing or yes. something like that. That is that an is invoice. invoice. Okay. Uh, then you have this is this could be your that could be holdback. Why don't you say what that is because people can't see your yeah. point. Uh, that, DH that DH is deal or holdback. So three hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, which which is which is a one. It looks like it's it's one percent of the invoice is hold back that the dealer gets paid quarterly when they sell cars. And we have an entire guide on if you just search hold back YAA, what is car dealer hold back? Oh my God, we, we, we did all this? I'm going to put it in the chat and I'll say <laughs> thank you, RWD, please. There you go. But let's go back. We're, yeah. we're breaking down an invoice right here. Go up, $837. That could, that could be your floor plan assistance and marketing money all rolled up into one. There you go. Okay, so that's designed to to give you enough money to be able to advertise the car. And just so you know, yeah. that the average cost to a dealership in advertising per car sold is a little over $500. Which, I want to say, one of the things I hope changes as yes. a result of the fact that there's shorter supply is they shouldn't have to advertise Charges, as much, which yeah. should bring one of the cost centers down, yes. which you would think it passed along, but... Yeah, yeah. it won't be. And, yeah. then, and then floor plan assistance, which is... Uh, which is what the dealerships pay because they don't pay cash for the car. Yep. They finance it just like a customer does. Um, and so they pay on that car on a daily basis. So back to the original question, the reason we went down this yeah. rabbit hole is because someone, what, who, what was it? It was Haskus, I think. I'm, I'm pulling it up. Yes. Haskus said, sales manager gave me the invoice price for yeah. a CX-5. Haskus, you should post that back in the community, please. Yes. Uh, and ask me what I thought would be a fair price to pay over that. Well, we know from having just looked at that, there's about $1,200 margin. Mar margin in the car. And then there's Plus, another, there's $1, another $1,200 in yeah. under the under hidden under, money. Under the line money. So what are you going to offer? Maybe, yeah. maybe I don't know, 500 over invoice because they're still yeah. making the yeah. other 1200 and they're yeah. making, yeah, they're making yeah. two grand on the front end of that deal on a yeah. Mazda. That sounds yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's how you can approach things and really, 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 um, you know, yeah, kind of like come across as knowing your stuff. All right, let me see here. There was a comment, or we had a uh, thoughtful donation come through from RWD Please One. If this goes on another couple of months, God help me, I might lease a new Alfa Romeo Julia. Hey, it's under warranty. Yes, yes, that's the good thing about an Alfa Romeo. If you lease it, it'll always be under the warranty. That's the only um, way to get an Alfa Romeo. Yeah, you never buy an Alfa. You know, you know, and if you buy one, you always buy a used one. Yes, um, but yeah, a car like an Alpha, you, you lease those cars because God only knows what it's going to be worth three years from now, and even Alpha probably doesn't really know. <laughs> Take a sip of water. We're about to do live chat. Mm -hmm. You got questions? If there's something we can help, we have to be pretty. We got to roll. We got to roll. We got to roll. Okay. What the hell does that mean? We just got it. We can't like we can. I be... ate enough that I can roll today. Trust me. I eat more. I'll just turn into it giant ball john c how much dealers typically make money how much deal oh man this is, we're off to a rough start how much dealers typically make money at gm when someone buys with employee discount i went in and they wouldn't sell it to me even though the car was being listed at msrp we've heard more and more of that affinity pricing employee pricing not being accepted by dealers can you explain kind of that rationale and what's going well on? i can give you an example for instance uh bmw mini uh when it's an employee purchase Okay, um, you buy it for back of invoice. The dealership. What does back of invoice mean? Well, invoice less the whole back. I mean, it's just. So what we were just looking yes. at on that Mazda. So you're buying it for for like net, and and the way the dealership makes their money on those deals is Mini pays the dealer two hundred fifty dollars for having sold the car or BMW or, yeah. to their employee. And and the BMW might be slightly higher, but it's so um, will a dealer when there's short supply of inventory agree to do an employee deal 
or uh, an X plan or an A plan uh, where they have to take a reduced profit in order to sell the car? Or will they say, we're not interested right now because there's no vehicles available. We just want to sell it to whoever comes in and pays too much. Yep, yep. All right, we've got from Sam, is there a possibility of rebates and financing deals on new cars for December of this year like there has been every year in the past? I want to just comment really quickly, Pops. We were watching the football game last night, a terrible football game. Three commercials in a row. A Kia commercial, Toyota commercial, one other uh, for automakers. Yes. They're still advertising deals. Yes. I think my supposition is, yeah, yeah. you're still going to see rebates and incentives in December. Yeah, but they won't be what they had been. No, they they'll won't be, be the, They won't be the same type of rebates and incentives that we would normally associate with the end of year pricing. And we post but the dealers incentives. will have them. Yeah. Manufacturers will offer them. They'll just be. I mean, one of the one of the things that has happened is the marketing expense that the manufacturers have. Um, has gone down dramatically because they don't have to support the sales of these vehicles with with as much marketing money to get people to buy them. Absolutely. And we post the uh, incentives once a week yes. back on the community forum. Rob, you, thank you for the thoughtful thank donation. You, we greatly appreciate it. New to your channel and love the content. Thank you. Interested in buying a new Lexus 450HL MSRP is 53K. 53K. Thoughts on a reasonable offer if I wait how long? D don't wait. I mean, if you... Well, uh, here, let me help you. Um, Toyota just announced that, that worldwide they're going to reduce their manufacturing capacity by 40% next month. It's going to, and that impacts both uh, Lexus and Toyota. And in the United States, that, that equates to 80,000 vehicles between the two brands. So the shortage is going to become more, um, more difficult. Um, and so prices will go up, not come down. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And in terms of making an offer, run it through the market price report and also yes. search Lexus LX and see what people in the community yeah. have been able to do. Yeah. James Weston Pops, we've got a very thoughtful donation. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. That's going to get a little bit of confetti on oh, the screen. Oh, look at that. Um, James says, thanks for all you guys do. You're welcome. Was yeah. thinking of buying a Toyota Camry, but going to wait six to 12 months. That's That seems like a reasonable yeah. amount of time. Watch for me in Venom. Let there be carnage October 15th and Matrix <laughs> for the Resurrection. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for the Matrix 4. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, James is a uh, uh, is actually in the business. Yes. Yeah, yes, as, a, yes. As, a, he, as a stunt double? He is a, uh, well, a stunt person. Stunt yes. person, yeah. Yes, yes. We've got a hell of a community here. Very we really do, yeah. I'm looking for it. And, and, and he's in both of them, ladies and gentlemen. You might, he might look exactly like a star or the star, or he might be an extra in a scene, but he's there. We've got from Chortle saying, what do new car dealers do with unsold cars? That is our <laughs> most viral video we've ever made. Yeah. It's got over a million views, which is yeah. kind of incredible. Yeah. Chortle, just Google search it, my friend. And, yeah. and it'll, but it'll, I'll, I'll make it easy for you. They sell them. Yeah, they, they eventually <laughs> okay. sell them. There, I, I know everybody thinks that there's like these giant fields where manufacturers send unsold cars um, and dealers send. No, the dealers don't send unsold cars because once the car is shipped to the dealer, the manufacturer no longer owns it. The dealer does. And the only way the dealer can get his money out of it is to sell it. Pops, so. we have 1,073 viewers or 1,065 viewers, excuse me, on YouTube yeah. and one viewer on Twitch right now. I think we're going viral. Twitch. On Twitch wasn't that wasn't that a movie with uh, uh, who's the Fresh Prince? Um, Will Smith. Mr. Rubio says, "Is it better to buy a new car or just buy my lease that is due in September?" Since my reason, you know the answer to this one. Uh, well, the answer in my mind is you're much better off buying your your lease car because this is one of the few times in history where the residual is going to be considerably less than what the market value is. It could be as much as twenty five or thirty percent less than what the current market value is. So um, if ever there was an opportunity to take advantage of a good deal, that would be it. And it's a good deal for a couple of reasons. A, you know the car. You know whether or not you've maintained it and how well you've driven it and how, how well you've taken care of it. I just, <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just fine. I'm like watching the chats come through thinking like, okay, we need to make, thinking, we need you're to, thinking, you're thinking, shut up. Man. Yeah. Well, no, no, but, but only because like Jen, Jen's like, Hey, yeah. it was hitch. You were yeah, trying I, to talk. I, I knew that. Hitch. <laughs> yeah. Right. You were Twitch, thinking of hitch. hitch. Yeah. Hitch. No, I knew what I was thinking of. Yeah. The hitch. Fresh Prince. But you can't do that to us. Cause you're getting kind of old in age and I don't know if it's, 
numbers are wrong. We had seven on Facebook. Excuse me. We have seven. But this is a great question from Jeff. Okay. Because this is the epitome of why we do this. I'll try. My and car is no, 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 no. My car is 17 years old. I really need a new car. Need. This is the operative word. Yeah, need. Need. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Uh, well, get a car. And 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 going if you need through, it. And going through that process, I'm actually, can you vamp for a second? And, and can I say one other thing? Yes. If if your current car is 17 years old, I'm just supposing that the next car you're planning on keeping for more than, I don't know, two or three years. So if you overpay for that car today and you plan on keeping it like as long as you've kept your last car, that, you know, when, when you factor in that extra money that you spent over 17 years, it's not going to amount to all that much. So... Just go ahead, get the car, move on with life, and then hopefully in 17 years when you need your next car, um, prices will be more reasonable. And I'm going to just briefly, and we've gotten some very thoughtful donations, but I just yeah. want to throw this out there for you, yeah. Jeff. So there was, a, a, this hasn't been posted on the community. It was actually just emailed to me. But it's, it's just a success story that was sent to me. I saved one thousand four hundred and twenty-one dollars okay. And it was because she stood really firm in the deal. Yes. And she went in. She negotiated it. Over the phone first. Yes. Email, email first, then over the phone. Then she went in and she kicked some butt. Yes. She got them to take an extra $700, the dock fee, yeah. off of the price of the SUV. So I share that because it is possible. Yes. It is still happening out there. Yes. There is an opportunity for it. Yes. All right. Let's go back to Big V with a very thoughtful um, donation and an even cuter dog. Yeah, I like the dog. Have a cool story to share with you negotiating my new Civic in Boston manager came out of the office and negotiated with me and called me the negotiation king and got me the deal. All thanks to you. Wow. I mean, that has to, yeah, get, that has to get our, I mean, yeah. do you want to do it? You want me to do it? What? I mean, we got to do it. You got to give them the, uh, the uh, stamp of approval. Uh, the right. Chef's good. Yeah. Stamp. Up. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that's why we do it. Yes. Great. Thank you for the donation. From Donner Pass Whiskey, we've got, do you think Toyota will reduce production more of base lowest price models to some more expensive versions, RAV4 specifically for me? Uh, they're going to produce what sells the best. It's pretty simple. If you have to limit your production, then you're going to produce the ones that sell the quickest um, and, and sell the best. So uh, my, my suspicion is not going to be that it's going to be base models. Nathan wants to know if he should, uh, his lease is up next month. Should he just extend the lease month to month for up to six months or get a new lease? Um, I know what I would do if I, I know my, my, I, I mean, I would, I would look at buying the car out yeah. for the residual value. That's exactly if you what don't want to do that, um, you know, you, you can do it on a month to month basis and see how things progress. Um, and, and maybe by the end of the year, there'll be some type of incentives that might make getting into another lease at that time better than getting into a lease right now. I don't know. I would buy it at the residual. That would be me. Yeah, that's like, that's, yeah, that's the best. But he do. didn't ask for that. Correct. This is correct. But I, I think that's part of <laughs> yeah. our job. Okay. We've got from Jeff saying, what advice would you give to an expat? Uh, I'm moving to the U.S. in November, therefore no credit score. Do you have any suggestions? Um, Did you ever deal with this? Yes. Yeah. Um, you have probably have credit from where you're moving from. Um, I know that, uh, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, some other European brands have executive programs where, uh, they can pull up your credit history from your European uh, background and they can approve you or not based on that. Yeah. Are there other ways like alternative credit? I, I know that um, there are some companies out there. I, the name is slipping my mind. There's a company out there that helps facilitate this. Yeah, it's, not really it's, sure it's what not, they can do. It's not easy. It's just hard to get a loan when you don't yeah. have any. Yeah, yeah you, you know, I mean, the, 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 the one thing that helps is a lot of money down. Cash down. Yep. Yeah. James Weston wants to know any possibility of VSC extended warranty through you guys in California. Yeah, it's tricky. I know we've been working on it. Kimberly's working on it too. We have to pass these exams and it's it's very convoluted, but we're working on it. Eventually, well, the good news is that you and I are both college dropouts. Yeah. So <laughs> the likelihood of us passing at exams and Kimberly, <laughs> relatively low. And Kimberly, we trust. Yeah. Uh, Angel, thank you for the thoughtful yes, donation. You, are car dealerships seeing more revenue because of this or is it just in profit margins? Thanks. That's a great question. Well, it's they're seeing it's, it's profit margins. Uh, Two years ago this time, the average front-end profit on a new vehicle sold in the United States was about $200. Um, then that went up to about $1,000. 
Today, it's probably somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 um, for just a front-end profit before you start getting into what the F&I department brings to the table. So the, the profit margins have gone up dramatically because of the shortage, because people are People are willing to negotiate the the ten thousand dollars in additional deal or markup down to okay. Well, I'll pay you twenty five hundred dollars, and find they think to themselves, "Hey, I just saved seventy five hundred dollars." Yeah, no, yeah. you just paid twenty five hundred dollars for air. I do find it fascinating. They're like, I wonder if revenue is down in in because there's just less deals being made. I don't know. That'd be really. I'd be very interested to like see those numbers. Yeah, we don't have a great. Answer I don't for think. That. I don't think revenue is down because revenue per sale is up. So total revenue is probably equivalent to what it had. Been. Yeah, but if you're selling less cars, I know, I know. That's yeah, but, what I'm, but I think that's for the instance, question. Carvana, um, you know, had their first quarter ever where they were profitable, and they averaged a little over fifty one hundred dollars front and back. But that's not that still doesn't hit on the revenue question. You can have fifty one hundred dollars profit on selling five cars instead of sell. You know what I mean? Well, the, but the revenue is the average selling price. That's, no, that's no. the revenue is the total amount that was sold. Okay. All right, chat. We're doing a quick. We're doing a quick poll. Who understands revenue? Revenue is what you sold. Who understands revenue? Pops, Zach, or no one? <laughs> you know, if if, <laughs> if 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 you if you sold a thousand cars and they and the average price was two thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars. That's what twenty million dollars in in revenue. In revenue, yeah. Okay. Now, if you only sell seven hundred and fifty cars, why'd you go to seven fifty? Okay, if you only sell five hundred cars, why not do a thousand? Because the amount of sales has gone down. Why? We just said the amount of. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you for that for that angel, Mark. It says. Um, Thanks for the informative video. Wish you the best during the impending storm. What, this yeah. storm or the one that's going the on? The one that's brewing outside. The one that's going on outside. Yeah. Angel, thank you for another donation. Yes, we really you, appreciate Angel. it. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, Motive Gaming. Yes. Thank you for the very thoughtful donation. Super cool avatar. I'm interested in purchasing a new 2021 Ram. Yeah. Uh, 2500 as a factory order. And I was wondering, should I buy or lease? I'm considering buying, but I hear you guys preach to lease. I'm so confused. Please help in a fan for about two weeks. We appreciate that. Oh. I'm well, going to pull up. Uh, can I say something? Yeah, yeah. Had you been a fan for two and a half or three weeks, I would have been more than happy to help. <laughs> but if it's only, no. Uh, in, it depends. It depends, mode of gaming, on how long you're planning on keeping the Ram truck. Nice. Well, well Okay. Said. If you're planning on keeping it eight to ten years, buy it. If you're, if you're thinking, well, I'm probably only going to keep it four or five years, then lease it for three. And and going through the factory order process, we yes. just put out an awesome blog post. If yes. I may, too. And I can't own. wait for the video. Yeah, the video will come out next week. Um, yes. Before James's wedding, how to factory order a car? We actually filmed an updated version uh, of this, an updated version of how to factory order right now. Yes. With everything that's going on in the market conditions, but Motive Gaming, take a peek at this article. Like it, it answers every single question for well you. not every single question but it answers a lot of them. a lot of them yes. um as you're going through that factory yeah. order process so it yeah. can it can you know what i'm about to use it can disambiguate the process for you wow or it can make it clear well <laughs> that's another way of um, saying you can disambiguate it <laughs> putting that in the chat and we are yeah. closing the poll yeah we are going to run a new poll oh god Let's see the answers to, yeah. to, to tonight's poll. Yeah. And let's see. We'll answer another question as well. While okay. Oh, no, the poll ended. Okay. 116 votes. So statistically significant. 60% say it was you, Pops. 19% say me, which is the same amount that says neither of us, which is moderately offensive. That's, that's okay. Yes. Pops, do you want to answer this question Take your from medicine. Evelyn? <laughs> My FICO score is 770, and I'm hearing that dealership is using a different score, FICO score 8. How can I find out my FICO score 8? I, I think we actually have some good community conversation yeah. on this, but yeah. Uh, well, you need to get your Experian FICO score, auto score. Yeah, there's an auto which, score. Which is, and I think there's a FICO score 8 for auto, and also now I think a FICO 9 for auto. Um and yes, you're entitled to a free credit report. Uh, might not necessarily 
give you your FICO 8 or FICO 9. We had this uh, great conversation from about a month ago. So if I, all I did was I came here and I typed in FICO, um, many FICO auto scores, FICO score, auto FICO score. Like, and you've got people in here like yes. Mike Dean, who is the CEO of a credit union. Yes. So if you need some, if you need some insights into that, this is something I'll recommend. I'll toss this in the chat as well. But yeah, you you also hit the nail on the head, pops. Not taking anything away from you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, back to the chat. Let's see if we yes. can answer any questions. Yes, there um, must be more. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. You guys are very appreciated. Thanks well, thank and hope you. to pass by. So too, Sandy. Yes. Thank, thank you. you for that. All right, let me scroll back up and see if there's. Pops, where's the after party? Ooh, that's a good question. This is I true. think it's right on my sofa. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Most likely. Okay, yeah. let's see here. This is, uh, at this time, is it possible to trade in a car with negative equity for a lease? Yes. That's probably yes. the best time because that negative yes. equity trade in is will be more valuable. And, and, and so you should have less negative equity than you normally would. And, and whatever negative equity you roll into the lease will all be gone. In three years. James wants to know, I need to buy, should I lease? It was exactly what we were just telling uh, um, the other community member. Yes. Um, excuse me, uh, Motive Gaming. Yes, it depends. You're going to hold on to it? it yes. Yep. Hey, Pop Shops Go. Yes. Are new smart cars still being manufactured and sold on Mercedes-Benz lots? Are these worth fifteen to $18,000? Not, e not, e not even if you got two of them for fifteen <laughs> to eighteen thousand. Um, and I, I know that that um, uh, Roger Penske had bought Smart from Mercedes at one time. Yeah, and and then even Roger couldn't get people to buy them, so he sold it back to Mercedes so they could use it to get to their corporate uh, 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 fuel efficiency numbers that they needed. Interesting. Um, so I believe the smart cars are still being manufactured by Mercedes Benz. And based on sales numbers, uh, not very many of them are being <laughs> sold in this country. Yeah. Um, but probably a few more than that are being sold in Europe. Fascinating. Yes. Alfred says the after party is in San Antonio. I like that. Yeah. We have a very thoughtful donation here from John. Uh, well, thank, thank you so you, very much. Yeah. I'm in the process of buying a 2017 Cadillac at $31,000 with 1,000 down and negative uh, two and a half, $2,500 yeah, for the trade. Yeah. The Kelly Blue Book is 28 uh, and change on the caddy. Yes or no. John, thank you for the thoughtful donation. Put the VIN, if you don't mind, um, and the odometer and what state you're in in the chat. Yes. We'll run the black book number for you so you okay. can have that as well. Yes. That's one way that we can help yes. you. Yes. Then we've got a. And it would also help for us to know, like, which caddy. <laughs> well, but the VIN would. Yeah, 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 I know. But I mean, you can't just say the caddy for 2000. You know, there was more than one model. This is true. Even I. I can remember that. Louisa has a really good question. One, okay. something Louisa. We yeah, Louisa. What I, you said least, least uh, whatever. New poll. Yeah. Did I say... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to play this ad lib, but it's in reference to me this time. Okay. Oh, I just hit myself in the eye with the <laughs> headphone. <laughs> Ow. Sorry to hear that. Down goes it's actually Down goes yeah. Yeah. Ow. yeah. Do you think the headphone attacks me because I've been a little sassy to you? I paid it. <laughs> paid it to attack you. I kind of hurt. Yeah, okay, sure. Louisa. Yeah. Good time to negotiate 21 models with 22 models approaching. You can try. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, there's a shortage. It doesn't really matter if it's 21 or 22. There's just such a shortage. I mean, but it depends. Here, let me let me rephrase that. It depends on where you are. Because okay. there are some portions of the country where allegedly uh, dealership lots are full. I don't know what they're full of, <laughs> but they're full. Apparently, uh, they're full of cars. Um, Potentially. Uh, yes. Um, and then there's other areas of the country where dealership lots are bare. So it depends on what part of the country you're in. There's a really neat website. I'm going to post the link um, in the chat right now. So this company called Four Eyes. Yes. I don't you used to work with Four Eyes, I think. Let me post that in the chat. I Whoops. used to work with Four Eyes? Um, they, they were a marketing, they're a marketing company for dealerships. Well, I didn't work. 
we did a golf event one time and I, I oh and our, yes and yes a, yeah. I remember that where I where I made a fool of myself on the very first hole yes and then I quit so Four yes. Eyes yeah. actually has not for all manufacturers but yeah. you can actually come on here and you can see the share of new inventory broken yeah. down by model year wow so for example we can see that Ford right now yes has three point six percent of their inventory mm -hmm. right now are twenty twenty twos yes which might be more, and then you can compare that to GM, and you yeah. can actually choose who you want to see. Yeah, awesome. I hit Subaru just for just for fun. It's a little slow. There we go. Subaru's got thirty-seven percent of their inventory that's out there right now, is and they don't have much. Twenty twenty-two. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, the reason I pull this up is because I think it's a valuable resource uh, to Luis's question of. Can I negotiate more on a 21 or a 22? See which one they have more inventory of. Yes. And also run market price reports. Yeah. That's one way to, to figure that yes, out as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Let me see here, Pops. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, just got off the phone with my local Volvo dealer. I asked the lease deal of zero down in $459 a month. Uh, they were eager to talk about leasing, unlike my local BMW. BDM yeah. uh, meeting Monday to discuss details. Interesting. Yeah. Volvo's got more inventory yes. than, than a lot yes. of others. Yes, um, and they seem to be more willing, although dealers seem to be more willing to uh, to uh, work with you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how complicated Maybe is Maybe because they haven't had the ability to print money <laughs> for all these years like BMW dealers Exactly, have. yeah. Yes. Uh, how complicated is a lease transfer? Um, well, you have to get approval from the, uh, from the leasing company. So it... it that shouldn't take a, a great deal of time, but you have to be credit worthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can be challenging, and yeah. every every single diff, every different leasing company is going to be yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, this is from Kyla, cute dogs. How do you recommend trying to buy a car from one dealership that is on another dealership's lot and still get a good deal? Like a dealer trade, also referred to as a DX. So how do yeah. you how do you how do you get a good deal on a car that's not at the dealership's lot where you're actually talking to them? In this market, you don't. You got to go to the. Well, you know, it, it, and there's an expense for for the dealer that needs the car. Okay, they they have the cost of having to go get the car. Yep. And and typically they have to pay for transportation to and from. Um, so th there's an expense involved, and 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 right now I just think it's it's very difficult uh, to get any dealer. To, to work with you to, to any great extent. Yep, absolutely. It's just the unfortunate reality. But your best yeah. bet, if there's a car on a lot, yeah, go is to, to that go dealer. Go to that dealer because what incentive do they have to trade it to another dealer? Jacob Jones. Yeah. Want a new Honda Pilot SE? Plan on keeping it a while. Would leasing be a route to take if I'm looking for smaller payments because I'm needing money for my business? I just started a few months ago. Congrats on being an entrepreneur. Yes. Typically, lease payments are less than a purchase payment, and obviously for a shorter term. Yep. But yeah. if you're going to hold on to it for a while, it's yeah. generally advisable to buy, not to lease. So just and, and oftentimes, from a business perspective, uh, leases aren't thought of as credit used. What does that mean? It doesn't count against you as as outstanding credit per se. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure in different contexts it can and can't. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I get what yeah. you're saying. Plus, it's not you know you're just running it. Yeah. I wonder Although if on on my credit bureau. Uh, they definitely report how much I still owe BMW for my Mini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it probably does show up. Yeah, there. which is like sixty seven hundred bucks. There you go. It ain't a lot. All right, let's see here. Um, yeah. <clears throat> this is from Bill. I have a new Toyota in freight status with my name on it. Okay. Slightly over MSRP, but my old Tacoma value is so high, I will oh, offset so the new price once sold. Yeah, good move. Good or move. Bad. No, good, good move. Good move. Yeah, because you know the one offsets the other, so. It's actually getting you a fair deal or a fairer deal than, you know, or a deal that would have been equivalent to a, a fair deal uh, two years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, broken brain, which do you prefer, deep dish or New York style pizza? Uh, I'm more of a New York style pizza kind of guy. Uh, what, what is the uh, cottonwood? This was the place I really wanted to take you when we were out and in you Vegas. Didn't, and no. I didn't take you. No, you didn't. If you're in the Las Vegas area, yeah. go to this place and get their um, get their pizza. It was so good. It was the best pizza I've ever had in my life. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Do they have any? I don't even know. Yeah. Just Yeah, there, there you go. It is. That that's pizza. That's New York style. That's New York style? Yeah. So well, thin, so thin, crispy. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, I can't recommend Cottonwood Station enough. So okay. Good. I'm sorry well, we never When are we went. going? We're going. We're going to be back in Vegas. Well, we are. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, That'll be an expensive Uber, right? 
oh man, I accidentally clicked on one and it was this. Does Pops use the same eight to 10 year rule for marriage advice? Um, okay, here we go. Uh, on the first marriage, for sure. <laughs> Can I get pre approval <laughs> on a factory? Yeah, you did have it. Uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't eight to 10. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Can I get a pre approval? Like four to five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I like doing the yeah, buddy, when you don't have it on, but you know I hit yeah, buddy, and then you say yeah, yeah. buddy. Yeah. yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was one of the truly uh, wonderful times of my life. I mean, the negotiation process for the divorce. Okay. Can, all right, story wait, time. Wait. Okay, so the negotiation process for the divorce was um, that, that – my first wife said to me, she said, I want a hundred thousand, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, me too. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I want a hundred thousand. And I go, Hey, I got a deal. She says, what's that? I said, I'll give you a five. She goes, no, I want a hundred. And, and so I think we agreed on 10. Okay. And, and so basically she got custody of the cash and I got custody of the house and all its associated debt, <laughs> the mortgage and everything that was included with that. Uh, okay. And then one day we meet up for lunch um, because her attorney said, I don't think you're getting enough at $10,000. Okay. You tell him you, you won't take any less than 40. And I said, that's great. I'm not giving you 40. She said, well, he says, I shouldn't take less than 40. I said, here's my deal. You can have 10 or we can argue about it and I'll have my attorney argue with your attorney and whatever my attorney costs and your attorney costs, that'll probably make up about $30,000. <laughs> yeah. So we can either spend it on the attorneys or you can have $10,000. And, and uh, I think the 10 is good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Life. I was going to say, don't get married, but no, get married. No, get, no, get married. Me. No, get married. No, get married. You know, honest to God, it was, it was two of the best things I ever did. Well, with my first wife, I did two things that were really good. A, I got married and B, I got divorced. <laughs> Those were two of the best things I ever did with her. Okay. And then, and then with your mother, that was the best thing I ever did was that she was gracious enough and, and well, foolish enough to go, yeah, I, I, I think I, I think I love you enough that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Don't know why, but I do. And God bless her for having done that. Yeah, yeah buddy. So there. You didn't say it. Yeah, buddy. There it is. Yeah. All right, let's get back to yeah. work here, Pops. Yeah. Enjoyed that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Miss Love. Hi, guys. My niece suggested that I, I like try. that. Right after all the divorce talk, we go to Miss Love. <laughs> You could not have planned that any better. <laughs> uh, I try an Acura SUV. However, I'm not a fan of four cylinders. Any suggestions? Uh, my niece suggested I try an Acura. Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about an RDX if you're talking about a four cylinder. Does the MDX still come in a six cylinder? Uh, yeah, it's the only way it comes in. There you go. Um, Look at the MDX. So, so if it's an if it's the RDX, it's an RDX, and I believe it's a turbo. It might that it might even be a six cylinder day. I'm not sure. It produces like 280 horsepower. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, the Honda Honda's been known to produce some pretty good engines over over the course of their history. Um, and reliable as well. Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know that I would. I don't know that I would be as concerned with a four cylinder engine today. We've got a couple more questions, Pops. I'm going back up to the top. We've got from Matthew. If dealer inventory is so low, why are the why are the manufacturers still offering discounted zero percent point nine percent APR on loans? Interestingly, we, the Chevy ad last night when we were watching the football game, no payments for ninety days on yeah. a Silverado uh, because they feel they have to, and I don't know why they feel they have to. You want to know what my hunch is? Okay, because they're so bureaucratic. Yes. that those ads have already been bought that they're running. That's my my well bet. well the time has been bought. Yeah, and 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 the ads and, have already been the, run, and the, and the programs were thought out three long, years ago, long ago, yeah. when they said, "Okay, uh, July, August, we're going to run uh, zero Toyota, yeah. Toyota Thon." Yeah, so yeah. I think that's part uh, so of it. So that could be part of it, and and you know, if 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 they took care of real time marketing the way they want to take care of real time manufacturing. Or, or on-time manufacturing, then, you know, maybe they, they'd pay somebody to say, we don't need to offer 0% financing. Yep. Uh, we've got, when will you have grandkids? My sister's getting married in October. 
So there you go. What does that mean? Who knows? I got a grand dog. Bob P. <laughs> Conwood Station and Blue Diamond. Yes. yes. Awesome. Do you know something I don't know? No, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, no, no, no. I know they hope to have kids. Someday, yeah, yeah, they hope, that's what I meant. But I don't think it's starting in October. No, 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 no. I just mean they're getting married. Like, and, yeah, and, and yeah. I'm not trying to have kids. Okay, not right now. Any yeah. advice on service contracts? Yeah, get a quote from us. Yes. Let's do a quick little uh, uh, example promotion. for how that works. Yeah. Let's say you you find yourself Let's moseying, do some self promoting, moseying over to joinya.com. You log in. You go to service contract. You then enter the VIN of the vehicle you're thinking of doing, the current miles. I'm just going to choose. Yeah, we have this Volvo. Uh, XC90. Yeah. A Volvo XC90 inscription. inscription. That's an expensive oh, car. Oh, yeah. You can come in here. Then you can see what it would cost yeah. for all of the different term options. Yeah. And the contract is viewable right here. It's also broken down. All the questions answered. And you can schedule a call with Miss Kimberly Klein. And, and, and just between you to get me your and, questions and, the, and the 12 people that are watching. Um, we make that, 500 bucks. What? Yep. $500 markup. That's flat. it? That was a good smile. Yeah. Um, anyone want to buy my car? Okay, let's see here. Um, nice. Okay. John is back in the house. He shared his VIN with us. Yes. So we're going to actually try. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to try and help John out. John is trying to decide if he should buy this yes. Cadillac. 13,000 miles. miles. That's that's very low mileage. Didn't goodness. say where you are, John, what state you're in. If you could provide us a state, that would be yeah. um, that'd be super And you don't have to helpful. and you don't have to D donate another five bucks to no 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 just tell us just tell us what state is and we'll run that yeah. um let's see here yeah the rdx is only in four cylinder now there you go the more you know okay so but it's a good four cylinder that produces i believe 281 horsepower yep yep yeah rick managed to purchase a hyundai palisade at msrp that's a win that's yeah that's a big win today. that's a real big win because it's yeah. worth more right now that you just bought it yes than it was yes uh, yes you could Find you can new. turn around and sell it as a used car and make money, which is crazy to yes. think. Okay, John is in Syracuse, New York. So let's okay, do a little. I've heard of, they, they have a they have a orange people there, <laughs> the orange men. Uh, Danny Shays, who you met once, who yeah. used to play for uh, Syracuse. There you go. Another guy by the name of uh, Anthony Carmelo played for <laughs> played for Hughes. Why did you just do last name first? That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we partnered with BlackBook, the yeah. same company that when we run the market insights uh, for the week over week. Uh, and BlackBook is uh, one of the book values that dealerships use. Yeah. Others, MMR. We are not able to get MMR. We tried. We can't. So let's see here. John, the retail value in rough condition, 29.2. Uh, uh, can I ask one question? Yeah. Didn't, didn't that Donovan McNabb go to Syracuse as well? McNabb Donovan, excuse Him me. Him too. I believe he, he lives in Phoenix these days. Who's the coach? The football coach? No, the basketball coach. Jim Boheim. Boheim Jim, yeah. Yeah, Boheim Jim. You just sound older when you do it backwards. Yeah. All right, so so poor John. John <laughs> donated earlier. Let me let me find his uh John was asking us. He's in the process of buying this Cadillac yeah, yeah. at thirty one thousand dollars. He's yeah. got a thousand dollars down, his negative trade in equity. Yeah. The KBB on it is twenty eight and change. Yeah, well, okay, but and we're showing that the retail value it's actually anywhere from 292 to 34. Yeah, and it only has 13,000 miles on it. So I would say that if the selling price is 31k, it's on the low end of where it very well could be. And you should consider making the investment of a pre-purchase inspection. Absolutely. There's no reason not to invest in a PPI on yes. a vehicle when you're spending that much money. Yes. We've got from Tom here. Um, okay, we are now in the donations that we then do what you can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're free. free. Well, that the black book is uh, uh, is part, yeah, part of the paid membership, but okay. Yeah. Let's um, we're gonna run Tom's down, and then we've got Angel asking us if we've tried. It's a, hell of a lot cheaper to donate five dollars to get us to do it than to pay ninety yeah. nine for a month. Are we've got to rethink this. <laughs> this is true. Angel wants to know if we've tried consulting yet. No, um, no, no. But I'm in need of a good consult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let me see. So we've got uh, uh, Tom. One owner. Did he say where? He, what state yeah. we're in? Tom Creasy. We need to know where. Give us a state, Tom, yeah, we and, we'll, a state. and we'll run and the it black. Can't book just for be you. the state of ec ec ecstasy. Nicely done. Yeah. Um, we have Igor in the house, but a different Igor. Yes. Igor, how much leverage does KBB's trade in valuation give with dealers? I got a trade in quote from a dealer that was eight K less than KBB. You just right. explained it. Yeah. Go. Go to. Go to. Uh, go to Black Book. See what that is, and then the the real leverage comes from. 
doing a online quote um, at Carvana at CarMax. How did you just pronounce it? Carvana. Carvana. Yeah, whatever. Vanna White. Beheim Gym. Yeah. Vanna, <laughs> Carvana. Go, go, <laughs> You're on a roll tonight. Go to, go to Carvana White <laughs> and and uh, and see if you can solve the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go to Carvana. Get a get an online quote from them for your vehicle. Go to CarMax. Go to Vroom. Get, get those quotes so you can have a better understanding as to what the market really is. And again, I'm going to put it up in the uh, chat and I'll pull it up and on And there's my no screen. charge for those. <clears throat> no. Trade in practice for success. Yeah. We break it out. Get the quotes. We we strongly encourage uh, yes. th that you do this. Yes. All right. So let's go back. I Tom's ran, in New Jersey. Tom is in New Jersey. I ran. Yeah. I ran the vehicle. Yeah. We got, we got, if, if they're asking 11 grand for it, that seems. What kind of car is it? Uh, an 08 Honda Accord. 48,000 miles. V6 manual. You know, there's only two people in New Jersey who wanted that car. You and the guy who owned it before, because it's a manual. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing, so let's actually demonstrate this. Like, let's imagine yeah. we were, um, who was the gentleman? Vinny, I think was, or who was the one who, uh, Igor. Igor is the one saying, What's, yeah. what leverage do I have at KDB? Yeah. Thank you, Hall, for the, um, uh, look me up on Bookface, right? <laughs> <laughs> My dad doesn't have a Facebook. No, I do not. Um, so let's actually, let's demonstrate for yeah. Igor the process you would go through. I don't have a space either. It, I don't have a face space. I don't have a My Book. You also don't have a My Back. Um, oh, that's the way out of my back. <laughs> <laughs> You do have, my dad does have a community profile. I do, and, and I believe I, I have an Insty. My dad Instagram does have an Instagram and a, uh, and a Twitter. This is my dad's community profile. Yeah. That and five dollars, you can get a cup of coffee. At the oh, follow us on this is our, our follow us on Instagram uh, yeah. moment. This yeah. is my dad's Instagram. Yeah. Once it loads. Yeah. If it loads. Well, hopefully it doesn't. There's nothing on there. <laughs> That's my dad's Instagram. Yeah, that was in Vegas. We haven't been in Vegas in a while. We'll post something soon. This is my Instagram. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Well, that's from Vegas. So that's let's from the photo shoot. Let's go back to Carvana. We're going to demonstrate how you can actually get leverage when you're yes. selling a car. Um, and also, this is another way for Tom, who's yeah. thinking about purchasing his Honda Accord. Whoops, let me grab the VIN again. He's thinking about purchasing his Honda Accord. Let's see what Carvana would pay to, mm. for it as a way to kind of yeah. you know know if it's a good deal or not. So we're going to sell it to them. Yeah. We said it has 48,000 miles. Yeah. And Tom actually did put his yeah. zip code in here. Seven, seven. Whoops. Yep, I got it right here. 07730, oh, yeah. Wow, and there you go, Tom. Interesting. So the auto check shows. OK, so I'm just going to round it up. OK, the auto check shows 49,000. So let me update that. Zip code, we'll say it's black. Obviously, you would fill this out manual. Let me see. He said it was the V6, correct? Yeah. All righty. We'll say it's got nothing else on it. No accidents, no issues, no modifications, never been smoked in great condition. We're going to make this as good as possible. Yeah. Neither. Carvana just loves me at this point. Yes, they do. They, they can't get enough of you. <laughs> so let's see, Tom. And again, back for Igor, this is what you would do if you were selling a car yes. to a dealership. There you go, Tom. Uh, well, that's how much Carvana will pay for. So that's what Carvana would pay for it. And then where was it? We were back in. I've got too many tabs. I apologize. And then this is what the black book valuations yeah. are. There you go. So, so Carvana is willing to pay pretty much uh, black book retail on the rough side. Yeah. Or great trade in. Yes. So there you go. That's, that's, uh, and again, pre purchase inspection without a doubt. It's just kind of what you have to do nowadays. Yes. Okay, Pops, let's catch not up just, on the... Not uh, just nowadays. All yeah, the time. All the time. Sandy, thanks for being here tonight. Stay safe in the storm. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, let's scroll back up. Um, There's going to be a storm. Logan's pop, yes. Lease rate is calculated based off of the money factor, correct? That's yes. the interest portion. Yes. Assad went to the Honda dealership and let them play all games and tactics. They were probably laughing and enjoying in the back room, but then I just left and disappeared. They're still looking for me. Oh, my God. Was well, that Call of Duty they were playing? <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's see here. 
Mortal Kombat? I put a deposit on a 2022 Acura NSX Type S, so yeah. I'm not buying a car yet. By the time I get it, it could be 2023. And and it'll be the last year of it. Interesting. Yes. It's the last year of the, uh, of the new NSX, and they're only doing a Type S for the last year. Very, very cool. Yes. That's a sick car. It is. Evelyn wants to know, is there a way to get a window sticker for a 2006 Jeep Liberty property? Probably not. We have. Let me let me check for you. I Evelyn, think there no. is a company out there that. It's so hard. Yeah. The, the deeper I've gotten into, um, the deeper I've gotten into the space on the data side, it's just so like disparate. We have this mm-hmm. article on how to get the window sticker. I don't think we have one for Jeep. Yeah. See, it's all like 2013. Yeah. Oh, 2013 and newer. Yeah. I'll link you to this. I don't think it's going to work. Um, but I'll send this to you anyway, as, as potentially something that can lead you down the right path, Evelyn. There you go. F Bueller letting us know that they appreciate this community. We appreciate you. Um, thank you. Can you try shift? I got a significantly higher number for them. We a hundred percent endorse shift Carvana room. But shift is everywhere. Correct. Shift is primarily out on the, um, on the West coast. Has anyone uh, bought a car from Costco? Nobody buys a car from Costco. Costco doesn't sell cars. They sell leads to dealers. Okay. They rent space to, for dealers to, to display cars at their local warehouses. But Costco is not in the car business. We actually have an article on this as well, which is a pretty compelling one, um, all about the Costco auto buying program. So yeah. I'll link this in the chat as well. Yeah, you you went through it in pretty good detail. Pros, yes. what you liked, cons, yeah. what you don't like. Man, you are a prolific writer, Pops. I am. It's, you know, I, I only wish I knew how to spell, type, and everything else. <laughs> um, okay, let's yeah. see here. Mr. Caveman. Yes. What would you suggest for some negotiation tactics if you are trying to trade in your car for a new one at a dealership? Man, we are, we are we just, just, I mean, I think. Trade in tactics for success. I put we, it up in the chat before. Yeah. We got yeah. we got you covered when it comes to that. Yeah. Thank you for the thoughtful donation, Ace Mechanic. Okay, I like that. I have a 2006 Toyota Solera convertible SLE. I like that. With 32,000 miles. My God, why have you driven it so much? White metallic damn leather. Yeah. Would it be a good time to sell? It was inherited to me when my parents died. I'm in Florida. Thanks, mm. guys. Great channel. Um, well, I would think that uh, that any convertible in Florida would bring all the money. Absolutely. And that. Uh, a 2006 Solera convertible SLE with 32,000 miles should bring all the money. Um, and I only wish I was in Florida to buy the car. Yeah, no. Yeah. You, I like convertibles. Now's the time yes. to sell that. Janet wants to know, how would you go about getting a pre-purchase inspection when the car is out of state? Contact a local OEM. Like, let's say you're looking at a Toyota that's at a Chrysler dealership. Find the local Toyota dealership. Contact them, see if they can, you know, uh, yeah. uh, See if the the dealership that's selling it, the Chrysler dealership, can take it to the Toyota dealership. They, if they're not amenable to that, then Lemon Squad. Yeah. Lemon Squad will go on site for you. Um, all right. Let's see here, Pops. Um, Solera might be going up collector's car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Bring a trailer. Oh, yeah. Bring a trailer. Is a great place for a vehicle like that. Yeah, honestly. You, yeah. You'll get way too much money for it that way. What's who's the famous YouTuber that also started to bring a trailer competitor? Uh, Doug DeMiro. Look at you, your knowledge, you're leveling up. Yeah. Do you know I what was, his is called? I was going to say Hoovy's Garage, <laughs> but I knew that wasn't so. I like if if anyone out there knows how we can collaborate with Hoovy. With, with Hoovy, I think he's super yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. uh, what uh, what uh, what's uh, what's Doug's called? Just cars or something? Um, only cars. Only car. Only, only fans. fans. <laughs> Only fans of cars? Only fans of cars. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is his call? I really don't remember. No, I don't know either. Only. Yeah, but he, but he is, uh, he is a, a direct competitor for Bring a Trailer. Yes, he is. He and is. we have a dear friend of ours who actually works for Bring yeah. a Trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Cars and bids. Cars and bids. Only cars and bids, I think, though. Yeah, but only fans that like cars and bids. And bids. Yeah. Um, Did you see... I read somewhere that OnlyFans is going to ban um, uh, sexually explicit, explicit content. Yeah. yeah, holy! What are these people going to do to make their living? It's fascinating. Yeah, please give give us your hot take in front of a thousand people on the internet. Your hot take on OnlyFans. I've never been to OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> is that a club? It's a club. 
Okay. All right. Let's answer a few more questions. Though it's called a night pops. Okay. Again, join YA.com. Consider joining the community. I actually think we should wrap the night up by going back to our original post, yes. which now has a lot more comments on it. Holy! If you mackerel. enjoy these live streams, we do yes. weekly members only live streams. Yes. There's a few less people. It's usually like 40 to 50. Yes. Um, and you post your comments on those. Yes. This one got 41 comments. Holy cow! I didn't wow. realize that. Yeah. Yeah, they seven comments. Yeah. Um, and you kind of get like more 28 comments. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, we do these streams for members only as well. And we typically do those on Thursdays. Typically on Thursdays. Yep. Yes. So so this coming Thursday, yep. we'll probably be doing a live stream. Yep. Typically 7 o'clock Eastern. Correct. Okay. And then Saturdays, we typically do, do 7 p.m. 7 p.m. However, folks, next Saturday. And Andy, if you're watching, we're excited to yeah. watch you. Next Saturday, because a friend of ours is uh, performing in a concert. He's a great jazz pianist, yeah, uh, Andy Kahn. And uh, he's performing. And uh, there's a show Saturday night, so we're attending the show. It's at 8.15 p.m. Uh, yes. Eastern. So we'll be going live at 6 Eastern next Saturday night. And I know it's a big change to the schedule. Um, and it might throw a lot of people off, but just we're giving you a week's worth of notice here. Exactly. Yes. Let's answer the final question, Pops, for the night. So let's okay. pull this back up. So there was just one more that came through. So okay. let's take a quick peek. Okay. This is from Gail. Who's in, in Bethesda. Bethesda. Well, isn't your office in Bethesda? Oh, yeah. We're also hiring. If yes. you know anyone, if you're interested in working with us, we're hiring for a bunch of different jobs. Um, in you, Bethesda? In Bethesda, Maryland. I'll yeah. be a son of a gun. Um, oh, I already have it open. But anyway, yeah, join YA and then click on careers, please. Should, if you... I, should I sell my condo here at the shore and move to Bethesda so I could be closer to you? Maybe. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. But like, <laughs> we're actually really trying to hire for software engineers, product managers, designers, the auto advocate role, the head of marketing as well. Anyway, Gail, I'm trying to buy a Toyota Camry hybrid. Yeah. Do I buy a 2021 tomorrow or wait for a 2022 that might be here in September? Assume I can wait. By the way, I logged into Consumer Reports and I'm getting 700 plus 1,000 from Toyota off MSRP for the 21. I'd buy the 21. You just answered your question. Oh, and it, it was a hybrid, so you might qualify for some uh, um, tax uh, credits as well. Tax credits as well. And you know, the tax credits go by the wayside once they've sold 200,000. Uh, hybrids and EVs. Interesting. Yeah, so you might want to find out where you are on that <coughs> list. Pops, let's um, pop on the headphones pop right on the before headphone. we... Right before we call it a night here. I can't move in with Zach. He's got a 500-square-foot apartment. <laughs> I'm not moving in with him. There's not a big enough bowl to make that much poop. I mean, just a truly iconic <laughs> yes, Ryszewska yeah, line. And yeah. then... I know that people my age, people half my age, people my son's age, they just can't afford to buy a car today because the price of cars is too damn high. And if you live out in a rural area, how the hell are you getting around? You can't afford that truck. You can't afford that tractor because the price of transportation is just too damn high. Yeah, yeah, buddy. I mean, you are just like at this point. I can like mix Rick you. Shester. If I blow up, with I mean, it's just like this is this getting terribly obnoxious. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's do some shout outs in the community. Let's call it night pops. Okay. Colleen is moving her son into American University tomorrow. Okay. Not far from where you live. I live in Dupont now. Well, mm. when I'm not at my dad's place. But yeah. congrats. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, really great. And that's not far from Bethesda. No, Jen no. Jen's clapping it up. Yeah, thank you for thank being you, here, Jen, Jen Jen. We appreciate it. Yeah, let's just do like nightly. Let's let's wrap with success stories. Like what's going awesome in people's lives right now? The rent is too damn high. Yeah, it is. I mean, these car prices. Yeah. 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 What are some other wins for people going on? Praise uh, Prayers for uh, Ken Baran. Yes. 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 Yeah, absolutely. We sent him a care package. I don't know if I told you that. Um, you did not. Yep. I sent Very him nice. a little. Thank you. Yep. It was Melissa's idea. So we sent that. Thank out. you, thank you, Melissa. If 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 my wife Zach's mother was still alive, she would have given him the same advice. So just know at the moment you're filling in <laughs> nicely for his mother. <laughs> um, Mike says, and remember, pops, it's too damn hot. It's it, I'm not I'm not too warm tonight. No, okay? well, I got to set it meat locker for you. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, that's nice of you to stream anyway next Saturday, even though you're going to get out to the show. Yeah, no, we yeah. love doing this. Yeah, absolutely love doing this. Uh, Eric, thanks us. No other wins. I thought it was awesome that Colleen's moving her son in. That reminded yeah. me of Dial Delaney. 
Yes. If, you, if you remember some of the OG uh, Colin shows, yes. Dial Colin yes. and, and my dad and Dial trying to set me up with her daughter. Yes. Those, those were the good yeah. old days. Yes. They're still the good old days. <laughs> still trying to set you. And they live in perpetuity <laughs> on the internet. Yes, they do. Um, okay. Let's call it a night. Yeah. Any um, other any other wins or successes for you? Um, Your yeah, pizza was good tonight? The pizza was good. I woke up this morning. Um, you know, everything was still worked. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for doing this, Pops. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. Would anyone watch if I did a solo stream? That'd be weird. Right. Let's not find out. <laughs> Check out my only... F Never mind. All yeah. right. End broadcast. Yes. Thank you all. Good night. And we couldn't do this without you. There you go. Now they can see. Yep. Yeah.